So we're going to talk about three-phase transformers. And what I want to do is take this as a bit of a example with numbers as we're doing it, but also kind of pull this theory together. What, what we're going to do first is we're going to assume that we've got a 50 kVA transformer. And the transformer has, it's a single phase transformer. And there are um, 20, it's rated at 2400 volts on the primary and 240 volts on the secondary. Now I'm going to give you a, like we said last time, you could approximate the transformer impedance or the transformer equivalent circuit with just series reactances. It's probably going to get you within 5% of the answer. Uh, so what I mean by that is that if I looked at the single phase equivalent circuit referred to the, so I'm going to put a little, actually this is my um, nomenclature was for per units, I was saying X1 would be XL1 divided by the Z base. X2 would be XL2 prime divided by Z base. This is my nomenclature here. So we're giving in per unit. So if I were showing it in per unit, I got JX1, JX2. That's your equivalent circuit right there. We got V1, V2 prime. And just to simplify the impedance part, but what we really want to be more concerned about is what happens to the voltages and currents as we go across the three-phase transformer in different connections. And so, so there are four different ways to connect a transformer. The first is what's called the uh, YY connection here. And in the YY, before I put it in there, uh, talk about the transformations to the other each side of the, of the windings. I'm just going to sh I'm showing you three transformers, and now I'm going to connect them up. So essentially, what I've got is I'm going to have a line coming in here. We can call this phase A. There would be another line, phase B, and another line, phase C, and then. I'm going to connect the three neutrals together there on the primary. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. So this is A1, B1, C1. This is A2, B2, C2, and connect those neutrals together there. So this one's just very simple. It's quite simple because what happens on any the phase on the secondary, you can basically analyze the primary and the secondary as in the same way as you did a single phase circuit. So when you have a Y, as you recall, a Y connected circuit, I've highlighted one phase that's a line to neutral connection and we have this neutral right here and that's this point here say n1 and you've got your i'll move it down here n1 and i have n2 on the other side these circuits don't interact with each other the phase circuits in any way they are going to be uh, you could just take a single phase and analyze the one phase as a single phase transformer. And so essentially all you're saying is I've got a voltage uh, applied 
if I knew the voltage, the line to neutral voltage on the primary, and I know the line to neutral voltage on the secondary, that's, um, let's say I want to know what the power is, and I connect, I have the primary connected to a three-phase source, and then I connect the secondary to a three-phase load. Everything that I've highlighted there in yellow is just simply represented by the equivalent circuit of the transformer. So the equivalent circuit for this transformer that I had drawn here would have this connected to the source. We could call that source uh, V source A1. And then you've got your load right here across the impedance. V load A2 prime. So it's just really quite trivial. If, if you had a impedance between the transformer and the source, like this could be some X feeder impedance, and we had some impedance between the transformer and the load, so we could call this X, uh, call this X feeder one, and you call this X feeder two. That would just be like I've added these additional reactances. And these are per unit, so I'm not showing the prime, but that's, if it wasn't a per unit, it would be X feeder two prime. So let me get, get rid of these primes for now. This is not, this I'll show as a prime because I'm just divided by the V base. And I'm going to divide this by the V base as well. That would be the X feeder here, X feeder 1 divided by Z base. So that's, it's really kind of trivial here with this uh, three phase transformer. If I, uh, this example here from the book says, let's assume that I'm applying a voltage line to line. That's this measurable voltage. And that would be, for example, from VA to B1. And let's assume that, uh, well, let me put the numbers to this in just a moment. The current that would be coming in on the line is I right here. So this is I A1. That's the same as uh, the I showing here is really just everything in magnitudes. The other side of the transformer, it would be the turns ratio times I A1. That's what this picture says right here. And the line to line voltage on the other side of the transformer, VAB2, that would be equal to VAB1 divided by A. And then these line to neutral voltages, the uh, magnitude of V line we would be calling this VA1 is equal to the magnitude of VAB1 divided by square root of 3 and the magnitude on the other side of the transformer VA2 is magnitude VAB2 divided by square root of 3. So if I had a, for example, let's say that each of these transformer 
each transformer is, is 50 kVA, that's the rating, then I would know that the, uh, and the primary rating is 2400. The secondary rating is 240. So I know right away that A is equal to 10. And let's say that I'm, uh, I also would know that the, in a three phase configuration, I've now created an equivalent three phase transformer with a rating of three times 50 kVA. So it has 150 kVA capability. And I could say that the, the line, the, uh, the V line to line on the, on the primary V line to line is equal to square root of 3. This would be the line to line rating. Square root of 3 times V1 rating. Or that's um, pretty close to 4160. But let me check it here. Uh, not quite. Okay, so, oh no, that was just a second. I made a mistake. Yeah, it is. So that's um, 4160 volts. That's a very common three-phase voltage. 4160 volts RMS. And the rating of the line current on the primary would be 150 kVA divided by square root of 3 times the line to line rating. So that's 150 kVA divided by square root of 3, 4160, and that's 20.8 amps. On the secondary, V line to line rating would be simply 4160 divided by 10. So that's 416, and the I-line rating would be uh, times 10, so it would be 208 amps. So from a rating standpoint, it's pretty straightforward. Um, now I'm going to go through the other connections, and then we can do some examples uh, with loads and things like that. So let's look at this next configuration. This is a Y delta configuration where I've connected the uh, winding um, the same way on the primary. So imagine, you don't, I'm, I'm assuming that my primary is where my three phase source is connecting all three lines together, but then on the secondary side, what you're doing is you're saying, I've got the A to B, the B to C, and then I'm connecting C to A. And then I would bring my lines out at each, this would be your A connection point, your B connection point, and your C connection point. And I'm calling A2, B2, C2 as the lines that are the three lines that are coming out of the transformer. Then when you do, uh, so what, what's really happening here is the line to line on this side, so let's say this is V line to line one, 
it's going to be equal to the phase voltage on the other side. So this is V line to line 2. So on the uh, on the primary side, V line to neutral is V line to line 1 divided by square root of 3. On the secondary side, Uh, let me go backwards here a little bit. I said V line to neutral. I'm going to repeat this. V phase. So what we have to do now is that we're going to make a distinction between line to neutral and phase. A phase is, this is a phase, what I've just put in yellow. And it's really, you know, what's happening across and through the windings. And so V phase one is uh, V line to line divided by square root three. But V phase two is equal to V line to line one divided by A. So, um, the phase voltage in a delta circuit is the line-to-line -line voltage on the delta side of the transformer. The phase current, so, so the phase is what I put here in yellow, so what I mean by V phase would be the voltage from here to here. So this is V phase 1 and this is V phase 2. The phase current would be the current going in, think of it as the current that's flowing into the dot or coming out of the dot of the transformer. So this is I phase one, and this is I phase two. So on the YY, I phase one is equal to the line current, I line one. The I line one is here. That's the one that's going through your your wires coming from your feed. Or I line two is on your wire going feeding into the load. So on the secondary side, I phase two is actually equal to I line two divided by square root of 3. Um, if we go back up and look at what this circuit is telling us, this is a, a helpful thing to ref refer to. It's really set, starting out with the line-to-line -line voltage and the line current and saying how does that reflect into the line and into the phase on the secondary. So the phase current is a direct transformation. So it's telling me in this circuit that I phase in the secondary is the turns ratio times the I phase of the primary. And so that is, is saying that I phase 2 is equal to A times I phase 1. But to get the line current going out of the transformer, so that would be this quantity right here, that's the same as this quantity here, the line current would be square root of 3 times the phase current. So that ends up being square root of 3 times A times I phase 1. That's I line 2. So the, this is a very uh, helpful uh, circuit to look at if we're considering the fact that, you know, we, this is the, the true turns ratio 
of the of the windings of each phase winding a so so with the with a y circuit the phase voltage is related to the line to line by the square root of 3 and the phase current is related to the line current it's the same thing the secondary the phase uh, voltage I'm going to relate it back to the primary line to line is related by that expression the phase current relates to let's see I don't want to circle that one I want to circle this one it's equal to the a times the i phase and then the line current coming out here is square root of three times higher so if my on the uh, I have a 150 kVA transformer because I've put these things together. This tells me that the uh, it's the same as before. The V line to line rated on the primary would be 4160 volts, and the I line is 20.8 amps. The rating. But on the secondary side, the V line to line 2 rating is going to be equal to uh, 416. And the I line 2 rating is going to be equal to square root of 3 times 208. So that's 360.3 amps. Um, the, so remember that the phase, okay, hold on, I, hold on a second here, I think I messed something up. No, I did, I screwed this one up, I knew that was wrong. I'm going to go backwards here. It's, it, this is wrong. V phase 2 is equal to V phase 1 over A. So V phase um, V line to line rated 2 is the phase voltage. So I really screwed that up. I'm sorry, you guys. I killed the punchline here. The phase voltage here shows up here. And notice that my connection line to line is across the phase. It's not line to neutral. So the line to line voltage rating on the secondary is... 240 volts. Uh, we can check our answer here because what should happen is we're, we're ignoring losses. So this is a, a little check on everything. The S1 um, 
equals S2 for lossless transformer. So let's find the S1 magnitude rating. I don't have to do that. I'm going to do the rating here. Then that would be equal to square root of 3, 4160 times 20.8. And the S2 rating is square root of 3 times 240 times 360.3. So what do we let's check our numbers and make sure we get we should get 150 on each side. So I've got 150 on that side. And on the other side, square root of 3 times 240 times 360.3 gives me 150. So did I lose anybody? at all. Are you with me? Yeah, pretty straightforward. Okay, good. Good, okay, so let's go on to the delta y connection. We're just doing the opposite thing. Hopefully, everybody's good. Make sure if, if anybody, if anybody, I usually get one person who gives me some affirmation, but clearly if someone's not following please and please speak up or raise your hand I'm watching for that um, okay so I'm gonna do this I'm gonna connect A to B B to C and C to A I'm gonna put a dot at the uh, top part of each transformer where I make this connection. So this is being fed by an upstream source. And in this case, we know that our tra our line to line transformer ratio rating, right, is 200, it's 2400, right? Now that would tell me that my V line to line in all the other cases so far has been 4160 but this is now has to be 2400 because it's across one phase of the transformer just like over here this was had to be 240 volts on the other side line to line And then I just have the three lines coming out on the secondary. And the phase current, this is the I phase one going in, the I phase two going out, equaling two I line to line two. Here's the I line to line one. This is your V phase two. I'm purposely mixing this up just a little bit, looking at it just slightly differently each time. This is your V line to line two. That's equal to square root of three times V phase two. That's equal to square root of three times a uh, times v phase two divided by a that's this relationship right here and the phase current uh, coming out which is the line current on the secondary is going to be 
a times i phase one, I'm sorry, i line to line one, i line one, divided by square root of three. So it's going to be the really the way that you need to think about it is here's my phase and here's my phase. That's equivalent to what I'm just showing right here. So my phase current on the primary side is lower than my line current on the primary side. But my phase current is what is coming out into the line on the secondary side. Going back to this one here, my phase current was my line current coming in on the primary side. My phase current on the secondary side combines with the other phases to give me a higher line current coming out on the secondary side. So, going to my ratings again, my V line to line rating on the primary is 2400 volts RMS. My I line rating on the primary is now square root of 3 times 20. Point eight. So that's going to be um, thirty six, thirty six amps. We can check our uh, power rating. We take square root of 3 times V line to line rating on the primary times I line rating on the primary. We should get 150 kVA. And I do get it. So there's 100 and 50 kVA. So that's always can be a good final check that I did this right. On the secondary side, my V line to line rating is going to be equal to square root of 3 times the V line to line rating 1 of the primary, which um, divided by a, which is the same thing as saying square root of 3 times v line, v phase, uh, the rated phase voltage, divided by a. So v line to line rating on the secondary is going to be 416 volts RMS. The I line rating on the secondary is going to be equal to the line current or the phase current on the uh, primary. So that's going to be, I'll go from the phase one times A, um, which is the same thing as saying the line current divided by square root of 3 divided by A. So the line current rating should be uh, 208 amps here. 
So the SR2 square root of 3 times 416 times 208. And that's 150. So I get that right. Is that uh, any questions on that? Does that make sense to everybody? Pretty good. Yeah, everybody's okay. We're going to go through the final example here, which is this delta to delta. So on the delta to delta, we connecting a b's on both sides, b to c, c to a. I think I haven't connected the load on the other ones, but that's okay. So basically, this is how. Uh, how you would connect your delta delta and the V line to line one is equal to V phase one V line to line two is equal to V phase two so you the uh, I line 2 is going to be equal to square root of 3 times I phase 2. I line 1 is square root of 3 times I phase 1. I'm, look, I'm writing these down differently than it's shown up here. What it shows here is that if I have V line to line coming in, that line to line voltage divided by A is going to be what's going out on the delta. If I have I line coming in here, the I line times the turns ratio is coming out here. And if I want to look at what are the phase currents, the phase currents are square root of 3 less in each case on each side. This is a uh, If I were to, what's interesting here is if I were to draw a black box around this guy here, say I've got a three-phase transformer, um, it looks just like the same relationship as the single-phase transformer for each of the lines. There's a difference between lines and phases, again. The phases are here, and that the lines are on the outside. Those are the lines going in. And so, in this situation, let me let's try to go through the ratings. The V line to line one rating is going to be equal to the phase rating. So that's going to be 2400 volts. The I line 1 rating is equal to square root of 3 times the phase rating. So that's going to be 36 amps. The V line to line rating on the secondary is going to be 240 volts, and the I line rating, um, I keep flipping my R's and my numbers, but this is I line 2 rating, I, li I line 2 rating, that would be equal. We found it up ahead, it's three, up above 360.3 amps. So the S1 rating, to check it, square root of 3 times 2400 times 36. The S2 rating, square root of 3 times 240 times 360.3 or 360. I didn't have to 
the point three I, I put there because I had it originally, but I, you know, I rounded things a little bit. So we can check them. So we got definitely, this is 150 kVA. And on the primary side, secondary side, we get 150. So that makes sense to everybody? Makes sense to me. Okay. Anybody, anybody lost? Anybody or anybody have any question? I didn't. Did I make a mistake anywhere? I need to make more mistakes, then I'll get more class participation. So you can go through this exercise, and it just says, "Okay, I, I what? How do what? What about what's the purpose of what we just did?" I basically said I got three single phase transformers and I can make them into three different types of three-phase trans, four different types of three-phase transformers. I'm showing you how, uh, you know, what I get on, as at the end, uh, as far as voltages and currents on each side. Now what I want you to start thinking about is I want you to think about the transformers as there's a box around them, because typically Transformers are built as, uh, you know, you buy a three-phase transformer. You don't buy three single-phase transformers and connect them together. And so it's kind of like a box that has three lines coming, going in and three lines going out. And if we look at the line quantities, I'm going to make these pink. Here, I've got uh, with this, I've got a uh, relationship between the line quantities. It's the same as if it was a single phase transformer for the YY configuration. We went down and showed you this for the delta, delta configuration. We had the same thing. Let me go back to that. F flipped on me. Okay, so let me change my colors here. I am relating these by the turns ratio. So essentially I could say the V line to line 1 on the primary, V line to line two on the secondary. And this is really usually how you represent tr three phase transformers. You don't use the thing, the convention that we showed for a single phase transformer. As you recall, we had the A to one, right? Where this would be V one over V two. When we go to the three phase transformers, we're going to use V line to line one, V line to line two, and in a sense, we're going to end up treating that like a turns ratio. And in this case, V line to line one over V line to line two is equal to A. So we had a turns ratio of 10 with these three phase sing three single phase transformers. The three phase configuration in the delta delta gives us that same turns ratio. And the three phase configuration of the Y gives us that same turns ratio. But now let's look at the Y delta and the delta Y. So I'm going to draw a black, a little box around this guy. And on the left hand side, 
the let's see let me let me go back to these I want to try to make it a little clearer what I'm really saying here is that on the on the delta delta I'm going to represent instead of doing a to 1 I'm going to represent v1 v2 where these are line to line quantities so here we had this example of 2400 and 240 phase voltage ratings we have to use the line to line voltage ratings and so for the y it's going to be 4160 and 416 but the a the 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 difference the ratio is maybe I can call it a prime I don't I'm overusing a prime but uh, what do I want to call it uh, a three phase turns ratio is still 10 because it's they're 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 different from a factor of 10 when I went to the delta delta this is the three phase turns ratio the line to line on the primary is now 2400 and the line to line on the secondary is 240 so I still have uh, a three phase turns ratio is 10 it was the same as I had for the single phase but now let's look at the y delta if I have the y delta on the primary side I'm going to take the ratings just like what I figured out down here it's going to be 4160 because it's y connected so on this primary side I'm going to write 4160 but let's look at what we had on the secondary side on the secondary side we had 240 so now it's different so the three phase turns ratio ended up being 4160 over 240 or square root of 3 times the a value that we started with that's what this y delta now let's go to the delta y the delta y draw, draw a black box a box around that the line to line voltage on the primary was 2400 volts so we're going to write that here the line to line voltage on the secondary is 416 volts so looking at this as you know a line to line voltage ratio of this three phase transformer it's going to be v1 2400 over v2 416 so that ends up being a divided by square root of 3 this is where the textbook makes a quantum jump doesn't really explain it and I'm gonna show this to you mathematically in a different way but I've tried to just show it graphically here with these transformer configurations so the yy's and the delta deltas are going to maintain that factor of 10 relationship even though with the yy you've got a higher voltage than the phase voltages in the delta delta the phase voltages are equal on each side but when we go to the y delta our turns ratio gets multiplied by square root of 3 and we go to the delta y our turns ratio gets divided by square root of 3 
So is there any questions about that? Not really. No, everybody, okay. Well, let's look at this Y delta for a moment and analyze this. So typically, uh, oh, let me give you a little bit of a segue, very short background first. What does a three-phase transformer look like? So for example, we've already introduced, if you recall the example we gave in a recent lecture of a single-phase transformer. It's a terrible picture here. This was this EI core. You don't have a gap with a transformer. It would be a very bad transformer. There's some weird power electronic circuits that do gap their transformers, but generally you'd never gap a transformer. So what we basically had done was we had said we had our primary windings and our secondary windings on this middle leg. You know, they might be wrapped that way or they might be wrapped on top of each other. Notice that the middle, uh, the middle uh, leg is twice as big as the, as the side legs because you're gonna create a flux in the middle that's gonna divide up equally on each side. So that's your one phase transformer. This is your most common configuration. Well, if I, a three phase transformer, the most common configuration looks like this with an EI. We have the three legs, but they're all gonna have equal widths. And this isn't really a transformer design course. We did go dabbled in it a little bit uh, at the beginning of this chapter. But, so I'm not gonna go into all the details, but one of the reasons why you can use this symmetry with three phase is due to the fact that IA plus IB plus IC equals zero. So the phasers all add up to zero. And if you were to even take the instantaneous scalar values at any instant of time, assuming that you just have a sine wave uh, excitation, you got the 120 degree phase shifts, those will also at any instant of time, the three currents sum up to zero. So as a result, you can take your windings and I'm going to fix this other one here. I had missed. Had my current going in the wrong direction. Okay, so there's one phase. Here's another phase, the two windings. And here's another phase. So that's your typical three phase winding. And the fluxes, well, you know, this, each one of them is going to create flux like this that's going to divide up between the three core, three legs 
because of these things summing to zero, um, you're going to have a relatively even distribution of flux throughout this core. It's an ugly, ugly picture, but anyway, that's really what a three-phase transformer generally looks like. And so this is why we want to look at this transformer as a system by itself. And the typical line diagram of a three-phase transformer, here's a Y delta configuration. And I'm going to go through this example really quick and then we're going to, I'm going to let you guys practice this with the trans, with, we're not going to go through this anymore unless there's questions in the next exam, in the next class, but you'll be able to practice it with the next homework. Um, but essentially what we're doing is we're saying, okay, I've got um, a Y delta configuration and let's look at what in this, this is essentially what's called a one-line diagram. And so, actually, I think I want to give you guys an example. And I'll probably record the example as an addendum to this. Um, but typically, you're given a problem and you're, say, you're given either source information or load information, just like we practiced with the three-phase transformer. And so, Let's say that I was given information about the load. So, and let's say that I'm given information about the transformer. So I've got, let's say the rating of the transformer is 150 kVA. The loading on the transformer, we could say, is 100 kVA, for example. So it's not completely loaded up to its full rating. So what I would do is, I first thing I do, since I've been given this, I would also have been given, let's say, the load side voltage and I've been given the power factor on the load. And let's say that in this case I had the Y delta, so my load side voltage was 240 volts line to line. And I could even give you a power factor of 0.8 if I wanted and say it's lagging. So what this over here tells me is that I can find the current I2 going into that load. That's the line current. I would take the load KVA, divide it by the voltage applied to the load. I was calling this V2 here, so let's change this. That's V2, and that's at the load. I've got the power factor at the load was given to me right here. If I take the inverse cosine of it, and then I'm going to multiply it times a 1 or a negative 1 for leading or lagging. So since it's lagging, I'd multiply it times negative 1. I'd have a negative angle. I actually now have the full phasor current going into the load. Now what if I were to ask you, what is the current coming from the source? You would typically also be given for your uh, your transformer a turns ratio, but it's going to be given in terms of line-to-line -line voltages. And so this would have said I've got a 4160 to 240 transformer. That's the line-to-line -line primary uh, side, and the line-to-line -line secondary side are shown here. So recall that if I wanted to find current I, say, just a little bit of a side note, 
I'll take about three more minutes here. Recall for a single phase transformer, I1 would be equal to I2 divided by A. That would be the current that's reflected over onto the primary from the secondary. For the three phase transformer, I'm going to say that I1 is equal to I2 over the A three phase. That's the same as saying I2 times the V line to line one rating, or it's R1 rating. divided by the V-line to line R2 rating. That's what I've just done right here. Now if I plug in, if I were to assume, go back to this picture here, say we're defining V as the line to line voltage coming in, and I as the line current coming in. And I'm going to use these relationships that are shown right here. and plug those in. So I have a relationship for V line to line 2. That relationship is right here. And I have a relationship for V line to line 1. That's this guy right here. So essentially I have V over square root of 3 A divided by V and the I1 is equal to the I2 divided by square root of 3 times A. This is kind of what I was calling the A3 phase. But simply all you need to do is say take this ratio and multiply times the currents and you can find the line current or the line voltage on either side of this transformer. And then it makes it quite easy to solve problems if you do it this way. And then, so you basically solve it on the line side. And if there's transformer information that's requested, then you work from the line side into the transformer phases to solve the rest of the problem. Now, there's one last thing I do have to teach you. So we will cover this at the beginning of the, after the exam. What I need to do, how do I take this information and analyze this transformer? So we're going to go into that the next time. But I think we've pretty well covered all the relationships between line and phase quantities. In order for us to get into the analysis, we need to start to talk about line to neutral again. And what do we mean by that for these four different transformers? So any questions? Not really. No. I think we got Sean, Brandon are all good. Anybody else? Anybody? Everybody else is quite quiet. I, I do appreciate any questions. It's all going to seem really easy until you have to uh, do some homework. <laughs> so, okay. Well, uh, luckily for me, I've done these calculations before for work, so. <laughs> yeah, yep. That's true. Yeah, very good. Okay. Well, no other questions. We'll end it there. I can stay for a few more minutes. I'm going to clean up these notes a little bit, and then I'll post them and post the, the lecture. The Teams uh, lecture is recorded. So I'm going to stop the recording now on the Teams. If anybody wants to ask me anything, uh, you said you were going to post a supplementary uh, 
example, right? Yeah, I am actually. Now I realize, however, that I did. I need to show you that analysis first. Okay. So no worries. we Thank probably you. will end up doing it in class. We'll just do that, and then we'll get into chapter three. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Yep.